Once upon a time, there was a kingdom, a kingdom full of happiness. And in that kingdom lived a king and a queen that had only one wish. And that one wish was to have a child. The king and the queen were very kind people. So they knew in their hearts that one day their wish would come true. And one day soon enough, their wish came true. They were blessed with a baby girl. Because she was as bright as the sun that lighted up the day, they named the little princess Sunshine. The king and the queen decided to have a big ball to celebrate their joy and birth of Sunshine. Everyone was invited, even the fairies living in the mystery forest. But the king and the queen made a big mistake. They forgot to invite one fairy in particular. Everyone from all around the kingdom and the kings and queens from the neighboring kingdoms presented their gifts and best wishes to Sunshine. And last but not least, it was time for the 12 fairies. The fairies gave incredibly unique presents to Sunshine. With their magic wands, they gifted Sunshine with anything she could want in the world. In the end, only three fairies remained to give their presents. And they also gave wonderful presents to Sunshine. May the beauty of the world be with you at all times. Little princess, my gift is eternal happiness. May you never be sad and always happy. Just as the last fairy was going to present her gift, something very unexpected happened. The whole ballroom was suddenly covered in green smoke. And when the smoke was gone, the black fairy appeared. The king asked who this fairy was, crushing this beautiful ceremony. The other fairies immediately recognized her. It was the evil-hearted black fairy. So, I see that everyone is invited. All the people in the kingdom. Your friends, kings, queens, and the fairies. But unfortunately, I was not invited. The king apologized for their unpolite behavior. Well, I will not leave this beautiful little princess without a truly unique gift of mine. The most beautiful princess will grow surrounded with happiness, love, and admiration, but... On her 16th birthday, just before sunset, she will poke herself with a needle and she'll be gone forever. Seize that monster, yelled out the king. But the black fairy disappeared with her evil laughter. <laughs> It was the last fairy's turn to give her gift. She was not as powerful as the black fairy, but she wished for something which could at least lighten up the bad curse. I cannot prevent the curse, but I can affect the outcome. May you not die when the curse unfolds, but go in a deep sleep and wake up with a kiss of true love. My gift to you. The king, with the attempt to prevent this bad curse from happening, ordered every needle, sewing machine, or anything that even resembled a needle, to be collected and burnt in the courtyard of the castle. With the gifts of the fairies, Princess Sunshine grew as a beautiful and kind child that everybody loved. One day, her dad, the king, ordered three fairies to take care and guard Sunshine, which has proven to be a rather difficult task for them. Because Sunshine was not going to be in touch with anyone but the three fairies. Sunshine grew up to be a very beautiful young girl with her guardian fairies. Finally, the day arrived. It was the 16th birthday of Princess Sunshine. 
It was only until the sunset before Black Fairy's curse was going to unfold. The king and the queen did everything they could to prevent the curse from happening, but they still worried that it would happen anyway. They locked up the beautiful princess in a room in order to protect her. But having no idea what was going on, Sunshine was not pleased with being locked up. Suddenly, a door appeared in the wall. Sunshine was mesmerized by this door she had never seen before. And she heard weird noises coming from behind the door. Curious and unaware of what was going to happen, she entered the door. In the room she entered, there was a woman sewing with her back turned to the door. And Sunshine walked spellbound towards the sewing machine. Just as the sun was setting, the Black Fairy's curse unfolded and Sunshine reached out to the needle. And at that moment, it happened. With only a touch of the needle, she fell down and dozed in her eternal sleep. <laughs> and there it was. At sunset, Black Fairy Spell was cast on Sunshine's 16th birthday. They dressed her up with the most beautiful outfit and put her on a bed of flowers. So started the days where Sunshine would be known as the Sleeping Beauty. The king and the queen wanted to stop the pain, so they decided to put everyone in the castle to sleep until the time the princess wakes up. years passed. One day, a handsome prince was passing nearby and he saw the castle, covered with thorn bushes and ivy. His men told the stories about the castle and the Sleeping Beauty. It really excited the prince, so he decided to go in the castle. The bushes were too thick, and the thorns made it almost impossible to go over. So he drew his sword and started opening his way by cutting up the bushes. Cutting his way through, he finally came to the door, and he saw two guards at the door, sleeping. He opened the door and was stunned by the view. There were people on the floor everywhere he could see. He started to walk around the castle, and he came to the king's room. The king and the queen also were sleeping on their sofa. Then he saw a room with a half-open door. He entered. This was the room where the Sleeping Beauty was sleeping, on a beautiful bed of flowers. The prince came next to the bed, looked at the beautiful princess, and leaned over to her ear. You're the famous Sleeping Beauty! You're so beautiful! Whispered the prince. Feeling overwhelmed with love, he kissed her on her forehead. At that moment, she opened her eyes and saw the handsome prince looking at her. With her awakening, everyone in the castle woke up from their hundred years of sleep. The king and the queen were in a great shock. They woke up and ran to Sunshine's room to see what was going on. And when they saw their beautiful daughter awake, they were full of joy and happiness. The prince asked the Sleeping Beauty to marry him. The princess smiled at him and accepted his proposal. And the king, of course, gave his blessing to the prince, who saved his daughter and his kingdom. They had the most beautiful ceremony anyone had ever seen, and they all lived happily ever after. Cinderella's Story Once upon a time, in a land far, far away, lived a beautiful girl named Cinderella. After Cinderella's kind mother died, her father married Lady Puffy. Lady Puffy had two arrogant, jealous, and quarrelsome daughters, 
just like herself. They would fight for hours, even over something as simple as a hairbrush. Ah, stop it! I said stop it! Give it back, it's mine! Ah, no, no! One day, Cinderella's father had to take a long journey. Lady Puffy took this chance to give all the hard work in the house to poor Cinderella. Cleaning the whole house, carrying wood to the fireplace, and preparing meals took up all of Cinderella's time. Despite her hard work, Lady Puffy and her daughters were cruel and proud. Mother, Cinderella's filthy. Don't let her eat in the same room with us. Don't let her sleep in our room. We're having nightmares. You heard what my beautiful daughters have said? Go and find a place to sleep in the attic. <laughs> Poor Cinderella settled in a dusty old room in the attic. Out of her small window, she looked down to the garden. And from time to time, she would talk to a snow-white pigeon. Why, hello, sweet pigeon. As the days went on by, while cleaning up her room in the attic, Cinderella met two little mice. Who are you, little guys? Hi, I'm Cheddar. I am Mozzarella. And I am Cinderella. You little guys love to eat cheese, don't you? I will prepare a delicious meal for you. Yes, 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 yes. We are starving. We haven't been able to go to the kitchen for hours. There is a mean, hairy, sharp monster down there. That nasty cat, Papu. First thing tomorrow morning, I'm going to prepare a delicious breakfast for you two. The next morning, Cinderella went to the kitchen without making any noise. The mean cat, Papu, waited in front of the tiny mouse hole in the kitchen to hunt Cheddar and Mozzarella. Cinderella silently took some pieces of cheese and headed to the attic. But then, Lady Puffy's daughters caught her. What are you holding in your hand? And where are you going with it? Um... It's just some cheese for breakfast. Mom! Cinderella is stealing our food. I'm stealing? I would never steal anything. A thief and a liar. What an evil girl you are. The little mice went downstairs and started to run around the kitchen to scare the evil sisters. Ah! Oh no! A mouse! There's a mouse in the house! Mom, I'm scared! Not one mouse, it's two! Ah! Lady Puffy was just about to catch the mice when there was a knock at the door. The royal ambassador arrived! <clears throat> His Majesty the Royal Prince has prepared a grand ball at the castle tomorrow night. All the young ladies around the country are invited to this ball. As soon as they heard about the grand ball, Jezebel and Cassandra ran with huge excitement to their rooms and started to pick dresses for this important evening. Also, Lady Puffy wanted her daughters to look beautiful. So, the evil stepsisters forced Cinderella to prepare beautiful ball dresses for them. The next day arrived. Cinderella was very tired. Her little friends tried to wake her up. Cinderella, wake up! Wake up! You have to go to the ball! But I don't even have a dress. The only dress I have is dirty. Close your eyes, Cinderella. We have a surprise for you. Her little friends took Cinderella to the middle of the room. The white pigeon lifted the cover of the wall with its beak. Ta-da! Ta-da! I can't believe it! 
It looks amazing. Cinderella put on her new dress and did her hair, and finally went downstairs. But her evil stepsisters saw Cinderella and went crazy with jealousy. Lady Puffy didn't want Cinderella to go to the ball when she saw that she was prettier than her own daughters. So she threw a bowl of beans into the fireplace in the living room for Cinderella to pick up. If you can pick up the beans out of the ashes and put them back into the bowl within five minutes, you can come to the ball with us. <laughs> Cinderella wanted to go to the ball so much that she began to pick up the beans. Her little friends saw her situation and came to help. Within five minutes, they picked up all the beans and put them back into the bowl. Cinderella ran after Lady Puffy, who was already leaving, and showed the full bowl to her. Lady Puffy still did not want Cinderella to go to the ball. So this time, she used Cinderella's dirty dress as an excuse, and they left Cinderella in the house and went on to the prince's castle. Poor Cinderella was very sad. She sat down in the garden and wept and cried right under a hazelnut tree that her mother had planted long ago. And just then, the hazelnut tree began to shake. And to shine, and a beautiful fairy appeared in front of Cinderella. My name is Leabel, and I am here to help you. Don't be sad; you will go to that ball as well. But how am I supposed to go to the ball like this? Leave that to me. Hmm. I just need a pumpkin. The other things I need are already here. Cinderella came back, holding a pumpkin in her hands. Fairy Leabel began to wave her magic wand around, and turned the pumpkin into a beautiful coach. The mice into very nice horses, and the pigeon into a well-dressed coach driver. Cinderella couldn't believe what she saw. But how did you do this, Leabel? The fairy waved her magic wand again and put Cinderella in a beautiful blue dress. On her feet appeared sparkling glass slippers. I look like a princess now. Thank you, Leabel. Now it's time for you to go to the ball. Hurry up! The fairy warned Cinderella. Before she headed to the ball, but don't forget, you need to be back at midnight, or else the magic will be gone and everything will be as it was before. Cinderella listened to the fairy carefully, and finally headed to the castle. The pumpkin coach stopped in front of the big castle. Cinderella, with her overwhelming beauty, entered the castle. The guests of the ball saw Cinderella and wondered who this beautiful young lady was. Neither Lady Puffy nor her daughters realized that this beautiful girl was Cinderella. Prince Leo moved towards Cinderella and fell in love at first sight. Beautiful young lady, may I have this dance, please? Cinderella was mesmerized by the magical dance with Prince Leo, so that she forgot about the time. When the clock was just about to strike twelve. She remembered the fairy's warning. You need to be back at midnight, or else. Cinderella left the prince back and ran out of the castle quickly. Where are you going? I don't even know your name. 
Cinderella ran down the castle's stairs and all of a sudden lost one of her glass slippers. Unfortunately, she did not have time to go back and take it. So she ran to the coach as fast as she could and left the castle. Find the beautiful owner of this lost slipper. If necessary, every girl in the country shall try on this shoe. As soon as the clock struck 12, everything turned back to what it was before. Cinderella went back to her room in the attic. She thought about the magical night she had had with Prince Leo and realized that she fell in love. But it seemed to be impossible that the prince would recognize her with her old dirty clothes. Time passed and the prince had a huge mansion built next to the castle for the precious glass slipper. All the young girls living in the next country visited this place to try the slipper on. Even Lady Puffy and her daughters visited the famous mansion, but did not take Cinderella with them. You stay at home. It is impossible that the shoe belongs to you. Right, the shoe is going to fit Cassandra or to me. But I also am a young girl living in this country. I have the right to try on the shoe as well. Lady Puffy did not even listen to Cinderella. She locked her up in the house and left with her daughters. Of course, the glass slippers did neither fit to Cassandra's feet nor to Jezebel's. Ah, if I try only a little bit more, I think it will fit. At nighttime, when the mansion's lights were sparkling, Cinderella made it out of the house, thanks to mozzarella and cheddar. She arrived at the majestic mansion and walked towards the sparkling glass slipper. As she was just about to try on the shoe, Prince Leo stepped into the room. Stop. Don't move. You're going to damage the shoe. No, no, no. It's my shoe. It fits me perfectly. She is telling the truth. She is Cinderella. Cinderella courageously put on the shoe in front of Prince Leo, and he realized that the shoe you fits perfectly that night to Cinderella. You, you are the beautiful girl I danced with on that night. May I know your name? My name is Cinderella, Your Highness. Will you marry me, Cinderella? Cinderella happily said yes to the prince, whom she fell in love with. They got married in the big castle and lived happily ever after. Cinderella, evil fairy, once upon a time, in a land far away, there lived a beautiful princess named Cinderella. Cinderella was married to the handsome Prince Leo. They lived happily in the great castle and enjoyed their lives. But back at Cinderella's home, her stepmother, Lady Puffy, and her two daughters were all upset and jealous. <sighs> if I was living at that castle, I would be going to the best balls and dances. <laughs> I would be eating the most delicious meals at the castle every evening. Even their cat Papu would dream about a wealthy life at the castle. Lady Puffy was so angry that she threw Cinderella's things out the attic window one by one. We don't need any of these things anymore. It's all useless. Suddenly, Lady Puffy spotted a box 
which was left in the corner of the room. With great curiosity, she opened it up and found an old pocket watch inside. Lady Puffy took the pocket watch and headed to the living room. The sisters also were very curious when they saw the old watch, and they pressed the button on the side of the watch to open it up and to see what was hiding inside. It seemed to be an ordinary watch with an ordinary mirror, except the hands of the clock began to turn backwards. All of a sudden, bright lights shone out of the watch and lit up the whole room. They were all surprised, and suddenly, an evil fairy appeared in front of them. <laughs> Finally, I'm back in the real world! <laughs> you? What? Who are you? I am the fairy of the past. My name is Kyrabelle. Kyrabelle was thrown out of the fairy world because she was a bad-hearted, cruel fairy. She told Lady Puffy and her daughters, Whoever of you ladies saved me may make a wish. Anything you want. <laughs> me! Me! No. I saved you. It was me. The evil fairy Kyrabelle chose Lady Puffy for the wish. And without hesitation, Lady Puffy made a wish. I want you to turn back time to the night of the ball. Prince Leo shall get married to one of my beautiful daughters. Gotcha. <sighs> the evil fairy waved her magic wand at the pocket watch and made every watch in the whole country turn backwards. When that happened, Cinderella suddenly found herself back in time, at the night in which she became married to the prince. Then, time slipped backwards again, when she was at the huge mansion that was built for the glass slipper. She tried to get into the mansion again. Then, she moved back in time again, when Lady Puffy and her daughters locked her up in the house and went to the mansion to try on the glass slipper. Prince Leo found Cinderella's shoe at the castle stairs, and again the clock hit twelve. The wonderful dance took place once more. Then Cinderella headed to the castle in her pumpkin coach. Time kept slipping backwards until Cinderella found herself sitting under the hazelnut tree with Cheddar and Mozzarella and Fairy Leabelle came back again. Beautiful Cinderella, I came to help you. Leabelle, what's going on? The prince doesn't know me anymore. This must be the work of my evil sister, Kyrabelle. Leabelle told about some mysterious box in the world of the fairies. It was strictly forbidden to open up that box, but fairy Kyrabelle opened it anyway. No! She told that Kyrabelle was punished and trapped into an old pocket watch. After a long time had passed, she was set out of her prison by Lady Puffy and her daughters. She showed Cinderella that Kyrabelle was together with them. Lady Puffy made a horrible wish to Kyrabelle. In order to fix this, we need to lock her back up inside of that watch. I agree, but how? Leabelle? Cinderella and their little friends made a plan. Another few days turned backwards. The ambassador of the castle announced the ball again. But this time, Cassandra and Jezebel didn't tell Cinderella about the ball and tried on their ballroom dresses in secret. The next day, to stop Cinderella from going to the ball, Lady Puffy 
locked her up in the attic, and walked away with her daughters without saying anything. Before entering the ballroom, Kyrabelle appeared next to them. She waved her magic wand and put a love spell on Cassandra. As soon as Cassandra entered the ballroom, she caught Prince Leo's attention thanks to the love spell. The prince headed towards her and asked her if she would dance with him. Yes! Meanwhile, Cinderella and her little friends were still locked up in the attic waiting for the good fairy. The white pigeon arrived at Cinderella's small window, carrying the old pocket watch in which Kyrabelle was trapped before. A moment later, the good fairy Leobelle appeared in front of them. We have to go to the hazelnut tree right now! Fairy waved her magic wand once, and all of a sudden, Cinderella and her friends found themselves under the hazelnut tree again. But from behind the tree, the evil fairy Kyrabelle surprised them. <laughs> your plan will fail. Cinderella will never make it. And now it's your time to be trapped in the watch, Leobelle. The evil fairy cast her spells at Leobelle with all her nasty powers. And Leobelle fought back with her magic wand. The little mice and pigeon hid behind Cinderella because of the powerful battle. Leobelle's wand became stronger and stronger. And finally, the evil fairy was defeated and blown down to the ground. Cinderella, the watch! Open the watch! Hurry up! No! Please! I can't be trapped inside that watch again! Cinderella opened the watch in her hand quickly. The evil fairy Kyrabelle disappeared slowly and went back into the mirror in the watch. All the watches in the country started to move correctly again. But of course, this was not the end of the story. The ball! I'm too late for the ball, Leobel! The good fairy, with a magic touch, gave Cinderella a wonderful dress and her famous glass shoes. A few moments later, with a little help of magic, she turned the pigeon into a huge bird. So, Cinderella sat down on the back of the pigeon, and without wasting a moment, they quickly flew away to the castle. But when she arrived, she saw Prince Leo dancing with Cassandra. Mozzarella and Cheddar ran to the prince and tried to wake him from his spell. Hey! The most beautiful girl at the ball is over there! The most beautiful girl? Whatever. Let us dance. <laughs> Look, she's waiting for you. Go! As soon as Prince Leo saw Cinderella, he fell in love with her again, and the magic of true love destroyed the spell of the evil fairy. Cinderella and Prince Leo started to dance. I think I know you. Your beautiful face looks really familiar. Cinderella happily danced with the prince. Also, Mozzarella and Cheddar were dancing. Finally, everything was as it was supposed to be. Cinderella and Prince Leo were married again within a few days, and their lovely hearts were back on track. While Lady Puffy and her arrogant daughters were mad out of jealousy. We couldn't make it again! 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 again. again.
Cinderella, the Magic Slippers. Once upon a time, in a land far away, there was a beautiful girl named Cinderella. The kind-hearted princess Cinderella lived together with Prince Leo in a wonderful castle. There was an old lady living in their country who had been working in a bakery for a long time. She baked the most delicious breads. But hardly anyone knew that this old lady, Xenia, was indeed a dangerous magician. Xenia would always go into her magic room in the basement, hidden from everyone else, to prepare different potions for those who ask for her magic. As the days passed, Lady Puffy and her daughters, Cassandra and Jezebel, were still pursuing treacherous plans to take over the magnificent palace. I'm sure there was some magic involved. Hmm. Cassandra mentioned the magician named Xenia, who was secretly preparing potions in her small basement room. On the same day, Cinderella and Prince Leo were planning to organize a ball at the castle. I'm going to wear my glass slippers to the ball. While the preparations for the ball were taking place, Lady Puffy and her daughters were already on their way to the evil magician. They walked along a forest road until they finally saw a sign with some strange letters written on it. As they moved towards the sign, they noticed a tunnel entrance and entered in. In this mysterious tunnel, which was very dark, candles lit up magically as they were passing by. And a little further down the path, an owl appeared in front of them. <laughs> What is that? What? Wow. Sweet rodents, who are you? What are you doing on this road? Don't you know the password? Zenia, Zenia, one, two, three. Pour the potion quickly. This is ridiculous. That's right. Follow me. I will lead you there. <laughs> flapping and flapping. <laughs> Uh, somebody turn on the owl door for me, thank you. Clockwise. Very good, ladies. Senya, someone here to see you. There were a lot of potion bottles around. Boilers, ladles, clamps. Different herbs, plants, and tiny bats flying around in the air. Mommy! This place is so scary! Ah! In the colorful smoke, Lady Puffy and her daughters waited eagerly for the magician. Finally, Xenia appeared, wearing a black hat, and raised her hat to show them her face. Tell me, what spell do you want from me? Lady Puffy realized that Xenia was actually her sister, who she hadn't seen in years. But you, you are my sister. I can't believe my eyes. Puffy, it's you. We thought you were lost. You are a magician now? Yes, now I can have it all. <laughs> Uh, tell me, why do you need a spell? The girls told Aunt Xenia that they wanted to take over Cinderella's life. Xenia decided to use a very powerful spell because her sister and her nieces were involved. At first, she asked for a hair of each girl. 
and put it in a yellow bowl filled with some magical water. Then she took the footsteps of Cassandra and Jezebel with the help of a basin filled with mud. She took the water, poured it into the footprints, and at that moment, Cinderella's slippers appeared on the wall directly in front of the girls. Hiccups of horses and the speed of a cat, Cinderella's slippers will cause her to fall flat. At the sound of Puffy's voice, the glass slippers will go only where <laughs> she commands them to step to and fro. <laughs> put on her favorite dress with her precious glass slippers and went to the ballroom. Lady Puffy and her daughters watched Cinderella secretly from a corner of the ball. All right, magic slippers, let Cinderella stumble. <laughs> when Cinderella suddenly fell to the ground. Of course, she couldn't understand what was going on. She stood up quickly, but her feet would not stop moving, and she kicked the ball guests as they ran around the hall. Oh, no! What is happening to me? Cinderella ran back and forth, to the right and to the left. Neither the prince nor the ball guests could stop her. Finally, she came out of the ballroom and ran down the castle stairs, but still couldn't control her feet. In the meantime, Lady Puffy and her daughters watched Cinderella and giggled. <laughs> Princess Cinderella is leaving the castle. Whoa, look. look at her go. Hey, I wonder where she's going. Oh, the princess is leaving. What happened to no. Princess Cinderella? Those shoes. Cinderella quickly ran away from the castle. Get lost in distant lands, Cinderella. <laughs> when all this happened, Cinderella's little friends, Mozzarella and Cheddar, asked Fairy Leabelle for help under a hazelnut tree. Leabelle, come here, wherever you are. We need your help. Leabelle suddenly appeared in front of Mozzarella and Cheddar and flew straight to where Cinderella was. The magic glass slippers changed their color and turned red. Leabelle waved her magic wand to Cinderella's shoes, but it did not help. Slippers of speed not meant to be comfy. Stop when your path gets muddy and bumpy. The fairy's magic phrases created a swamp on the road. The glass shoes got stuck in the magic swamp, and they stopped. But unfortunately, Cinderella began to sink into the swamp too. Help! Leabelle, I'm sinking! Leabelle waved her wand three times, and wings grew out of Cinderella's shoulders. Cinderella used the new wings to escape the swamp. Thank you, Leabelle. You saved my life, but I will never be able to see my glass slippers again. The glass slippers were bewitched, Cinderella. 
Hurry, let's go back to the castle. Fairy Leobel gave Cinderella new shoes, and they went back to the castle together. Cinderella was very happy to meet Prince Leo and her little friends again. When Lady Puffy and her daughters realized that their evil plan had failed, they left the ball immediately. Ah! The good ones always win! I hate it! Cinderella and her loved ones always stay happy. The owl watched everything and told the magician Xenia. <laughs> Oh, please, 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 yeah, please, yeah, listen, the Sue thing did not work. No! This can't be happening. How can they defeat a magician like me? Nobody can do that. <sighs> whoa, whoa, calm down, woman. Cinderella and the Three Witches. Once upon a time, in a land far away, there lived a magician named Xenia. Xenia believed that she was the most powerful magician that had ever existed. But when the fairy Leobel broke one of her spells, Xenia realized that her magic had weakened. So she used her magic to summon magicians and witches to join forces. I'm calling for you, magicians and witches from everywhere. Do you think the thing is turned on? Give me a sign. The first one to respond to Xenia's calls was the evil witch, Hela. Then, Vega from the underwater world came into conversation. And finally, they began to make treacherous plans together. Hela told that she wanted to destroy the beauty of Snow White, and Vega planned to take control of the underwater kingdom by harming mermaid Arya. We must win a war against the princesses, but we will start with Cinderella. Then let's go get Snow White. And Aria. <laughs> As the trio of witches cackled with evil laughter, Cinderella awoke to a happy morning with her little mouse friends. The rainbow is all above. Your prince will give you love So never give up believing Two hearts are never leaving Dream Cinderella, dream Your heart shines in the stream dream How beautiful you look, my princess. But before she could answer, the earth began to shake under their feet. The trees around them were about to fall over. They swung to the left and to the right. Cinderella's friend, the white pigeon, flew towards them nervously. What's going on here? Please call for help, White Pigeon! When the White Pigeon noticed Cinderella's situation, she flew to the ocean with a letter to the underwater kingdom. What is happening? No! No! The castle! My prince, look! The castle is falling! The castle began to fade away. It was about to be wiped from the earth. 
This was all happening because the three evil magicians, Xenia, Hela, and Vega, bewitched the castle together with the help of their crystal balls. They thought they couldn't be stopped. And when the castle completely crumbles, you will disappear. <laughs> <laughs> When Cinderella and Prince Leo ran away from the castle, it began to rain. So they took shelter under a hazelnut tree. This is a hazelnut tree. That means we can call for Leobel. Cinderella put her hand on the hazelnut tree, closed her eyes, and called for the good fairy Leobel. Leobel, Leobel. Help us to break the spell. When she heard Cinderella's voice, Leobel appeared under the tree and used her wand to find out what was going on. Uh, there's witches in the tree. Oh no, Cinderella. This is the work of three powerful witches. They are so strong. We must hurry up and break this spell. With a little magic, Fairy Leobel took everyone to the castle. When they arrived, they couldn't believe what they saw. The old castle was gone. Instead, there was a new, evil-looking castle. Mozzarella and Cheddar were also in shock. Suddenly, Xenia the Magician appeared in front of the castle. With Hela and Vega next to her, You came to the wrong place. Now you don't have a home. And now you will disappear too. <laughs> Each of the evil witches started to fire magic bolts at Cinderella. Leobel panicked and tried to shield Cinderella from the magic rays with her wand. But she was outnumbered, and the magic drained the power. She was almost defeated. She couldn't hold her magic wand any longer, and it dropped. Cinderella quickly took the magic wand and turned it to the witches. Fortunately, the light from the wand could stop the magic rays. Oh no! Oh no! What are we going to do now? But the evil witches wouldn't give up. This time, Vega used her power to defeat Cinderella by using water from deep down in the earth. She made the water split, and water streamed out. Oh no! How could she do this? <laughs> You will never be able to defeat me. As the water streamed all over, something unexpected happened. Little Mermaid Arya's father, King Poseidon, appeared. I read your letter. Leave Vega to me. Poseidon used his trident and directed Please, some of the water witch. towards the witches. Throw the witch in the trap. You can't do this! Ah! Vega tried to stop the water, but she couldn't. Poseidon pointed his trident at the witches again and turned the water into ice so that the witches were trapped in a giant ice block. Leobel saw her chance to help. She reached out for her wand and used its power to wrap a chain around the ice block and put a big lock on them. Then, she lifted them up and threw them onto a mountain where no one would ever dare to climb. Finally, the witches had been defeated. Thanks, Thanks Poseidon. Poseidon! Poseidon returned to the underwater kingdom. Good fairy Leobel made the new, terrible-looking castle disappear 
and restored Cinderella's beautiful castle back to where it was. Prince Leo and Cinderella were so glad to have their castle back. Thank you, Leobel. No matter how evil the witches are, they will never be able to defeat your kindness. I will protect you forever, dear Cinderella. The witches received the punishment for what they had done. They stayed trapped in the ice block on a mountain until the sun melted the ice and they returned to their lives. This war hasn't ended here, Leobel and Cinderella. As soon as Rapunzel's witch Camilla joins us, you will be defeated. <laughs> Cinderella and the Big Bad Wolf Once upon a time, in a faraway land, there was a very beautiful girl named Cinderella. With her blonde hair, beautiful eyes, and kind attitude, she was enchanting everyone in the castle where she was living. One day, Cinderella stood in front of the window of her room and looked at the beautiful view of the forest, and she saw a huge rainbow. Oh! Oh my, such a beautiful rainbow! I wonder what's at the end of the rainbow. Hmm. As Cinderella daydreamed of the beauty of the rainbow, her mouse hmm. friends, Mozzarella and Cheddar, came to her and oh. climbed up her shoulders. Cinderella, can you take us to that rainbow? Yes, 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 please. But I have never been to that part of the forest before. What if it's dangerous? A place with such a beautiful rainbow is surely not dangerous, I think. Yep, and don't worry, Cheddar and I will protect you. The rainbow is all above. Your prince will give you love. So never. Catch up with the rainbow before it disappears, Cinderella? If we go before the sun goes down, of course we'll catch up. After moving in the forest for a while, these friends who had set off with hope encountered a very cute turtle. Hey. Aren't you Cinderella, the beautiful princess of our land? Yes, I am. We're on a quest. So tell me, what has brought you here? We are looking for a rainbow. We are curious about what beautiful things are at the end of it. Really? May I join you? Then a sweet rabbit raised his head among the trees. He also wanted to go to the end of the rainbow. Of course, come with us. So they continued to walk all together through the forest. A little ahead, they saw three squirrels running toward them. The squirrels looked very frightened and fussy. They continued running without noticing Cinderella and her animal friends. Hmm, the squirrels. Why didn't they greet us? They seemed scared. They wouldn't normally do that. I think they were running away from something. After a while, they saw a gazelle running in fright, and they barely slowed him down. Cinderella, look, there's a scar on the gazelle's feet. Cinderella started to talk to the gazelle, since she could speak with animals and understand them. What's going on, beautiful gazelle? Three squirrels have just passed.
past us, running for their lives. Is there danger in the forest? Gazelle whispered into Cinderella's ear and dashed away. Cinderella could not believe what she heard. Oh, what happened? What did our gazelle friend say? <gasps> the big bad wolf! What? Yes, the big bad wolf has started to attack all the animals in the forest. He even wants to supersede the lion, the king of the forests. This is so dangerous. We must go back to the castle immediately. No, there may be a lot of animals who need help in the forest. We must go and help them. All animal friends obeyed Cinderella and kept on moving together in the forest to stop the big bad wolf. When they had the wolf in their sights, the wolf was turning around the puma and fox he had captured, roaring loudly at them and trying to prove his power. I am the king of the forest now. I will even beat the lion soon. The whole forest will fear me. Look, even this giant elephant stands on one leg by my command. <laughs> Despite being strong and large animals, the poor elephant, puma, and fox were so scared that they could not open their mouths and say a word. <laughs> Tremble in fear. <laughs> As the wolf continued spreading fear, he took a step backwards and fell into a trap that hunters had left. Help! I am caught! Help me! Oh, don't leave me! Seeing that the wolf was vulnerable, Elephant, Fox, and Puma fled immediately. However, a little ahead, they encountered Cinderella and her friends. When the big bad wolf was about to harm the whole forest, he fell into the trap of hunters. Hunter's trap? It sounds like these hunters are more dangerous than the wolf itself. Cinderella's, Cinderella's right. Hunters, hunters are, are very, very dangerous. dangerous. So what? Are we going to help the wolf? Of course. What if it was you that was attacked by the big bad wolf? Come on. I have a plan. All the animals agreed with Cinderella and went to rescue the wolf. At that moment, they saw two hunters standing next to the wolf caught in the trap. Oh, I can't believe he wasted this trap for a wolf. Yes, I wish we could catch a fox, a rabbit, or a more delicious animal. <laughs> hmm. Maybe a bigger animal will be captured in our other traps. <laughs> what are we going to do with this wolf? Hmm. You see how dangerous hunters are for the forest. You're right, Cinderella. Come on, let's scare them and chase them away so that they could never harm any animals again. The friends of Cinderella and even all the other animals in the forest at that moment came together and started running towards the hunters. The hunters were oh, frightened what at what the they animals? saw. So many animals, what are they doing here? No, no go away! Run, run, Frankie! Run. And so, they fled until they were out of sight. Cinderella and her mouse friends approached the trapped uh, wolf. Save me! Please, I beg you, save me! We will save you, don't worry. But on one condition, you will promise not to hurt anyone anymore. Yes, yes, I promise, I promise. Just please get me out of this trap. I won't harm another creature, not even an ant. Please, please. Oh. Believing the wolf, Cinderella and the animals saved him from the terrible trap. Good to be out of that trap. Thus, they understood that the most valuable thing in the forest was to protect each other and to protect their friendship. Oh, look! We're at the end of the rainbow now! Ooh! Ooh, pretty! At 
the end of that rainbow, Cinderella and her friends were very curious about what was at the end of it. There was nothing but kindness, friendship, and love. <laughs>